Good morning to you all and welcome to our worship service on this Sunday the 26th of July. I hope that you had a wonderful week and thank you for joining us as we come into the presence of God this morning. We have a few intimations that we would like to share with you this morning. The church office is still open and you are more than welcome to contact the office between 9.30 and 12.30 or on our mobile number 077-2688-2077 whilst the Williamson Hall is still closed. A kind reminder that also this evening at 7 o'clock churches across Scotland will once again come together as we pray for our country and the world. We will have more information on our Facebook page and also for those who follow Minister's Minute. We have come to the moment where we are able now to announce that St. Giles Church will reopen on Sunday the 2nd of August at 10.30. We would like to welcome you all back to church. However, it will be different, it will be new and there will be some challenges and some teething problems at the beginning. At this moment, we can only accommodate 40 people in the service at St. Giles. This is due to the guidelines that we have received from the Church of Scotland and the Scottish Government. We would therefore encourage you to book a seat between Monday and Thursday with Kathleen Thompson, the telephone number is in the magazine as well as on Facebook and on the church website, and you will be able to book your seat for the service and we will then have a pre-populated list as according to the guidelines, which means that we will be able to tick you off as you come into the building on the second. Information will only be stored as long as it's necessary, and I think the current guidelines is four weeks. It will be in the office in the safe. This is being done for track and tracing purposes in the eventuality that somebody does test positive for COVID-19 at this time. Regarding parking, we would like to encourage people to park at the Murray Street parking area up behind St. Giles and not in the High Street as we would normally do. Due to the High Street being closed between um, 11 and 4 um, and also to make sure that the street, the High Street itself is cleared from vehicles. We would like to ask your uh, help and assistance in this matter as well. Everything has been organised in the church. We have hand sanitising stations, and everything else ready and raring to go. So we hope to welcome you back at St. Giles in perhaps a different situation that we are used to on Sunday the 2nd of August. A kind of reminder that although we are returning back to St. Giles physically, our online services will continue as normal on our YouTube channel. We will send out a link on Facebook as well as on the Minister's Minute group so don't worry, if you can't come to St. Giles on Sunday, you would still be able to follow us online um, as usual. And we will continue with our online services during the duration uh, uh, for probably until next year. We come together in the presence of God and we are reminded through the psalmist in Psalm 100 verse 1, Let all the earth acclaim the Lord, worship the Lord in gladness. And we now continue our worship as we sing together in 153, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Good morning to all the children. I hope that you had a great week and are still enjoying the school holidays. Hopefully you were able to spend some time with family and friends and really enjoying the good weather that we are having right now. Over the last two weeks, we talked about prayer and how we can talk to God and communicate with Him. But God also wants us to share our faith and His love with the people around us. And how do we do that? Well, I thought about that for a, for a brief uh, moment. And then I remembered a movie of a few years ago, The Horse Whisperer. Uh, the plot is that there was a, a little girl that was injured on her horse. The horse got wild. And the mother knew that the one way was to have somebody come and look at the horse and try to calm it down. And then they got this gentleman. He was known as a horse whisperer. And he would normally come and calm the horse and whisper in the horse's ear. And nobody would know what he was telling the horse. Perhaps... This helps us also in our journey of faith, because wherever we are in the company of other people, when they are troubled, when they are anxious, when they are filled with fear, we can sometimes just whisper to them a word of encouragement. Perhaps just whisper in their ear uh, something uh, that could comfort them and can give them peace. We don't necessarily have to go out and shout out. Uh, uh, our faith. Sometimes the best way of sharing our faith is when we, when we whisper it, when we show people that we really love them and that we really want to share God's comfort with them. St. Francis of Assisi once said, preach every moment of every day during the week and if it's really necessary, use words. Because what he was trying to tell his listeners and the people around him was that the way that we approach other people, the way that we smile and care for others, are sometimes the way that God can whisper to other people that he loves them and that he cares for them and that he will always be with them. Paul wrote in Philippians 4 that when we pray, we can bring our whole life before God and that Jesus Christ then guards over our hearts and minds with his peace and with his love. That's a bit loosely uh, paraphrased by myself. But when we share this with other people, when we whisper it to them, by the way that we live and the way that we talk and the way that we just show them love and comfort, God can also whisper his peace and hope in their ears. Now we're going to sing that lovely hymn, Lord, the light of your light is shining and let's join that so that we can share God's light to everyone in this world.
as we come together in prayer before the Lord, we know that this is the moment when we can speak to God, open our hearts to Him, and also know that He will be listening to each word that we speak to Him. So therefore, let us pray. Lord God, the wonders of your creation, the splendor of heavens, the beauty of the earth, the order and richness of nature, all speak to us of your glory, the coming of your Son, the presence of your Spirit, the fellowship of your Church. It shows us the marvel of your love. We worship and adore you, God of grace and glory, God of mercy, God of love. In humbleness of heart, we confess our sins. Those moments during the week where we did not follow your way and journey with you, those moments when we forgot to love and to serve you, when we were careless of your world and put its life in danger. We talk of concern for others, but fail to match our words with action. Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, you look after us. You bring us back into your presence. You allow us to journey with you each and every day and you forget all the things, all our wrongdoings of the past and the present. You bring us into the future of everlasting life through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Saviour, in whose name we pray all of this. And now with the Church Universal, we pray together this morning. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory for ever. Amen. We come together in the presence of God to listen to his word. And this morning we continue with Paul's uh, writing to the congregation in Rome as we read Romans 8 from verse 12 to 25. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by Him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies that with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs of Christ, if indeed we share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subject to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship. The redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we are saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. 
who hopes for what they already have? If we hope for what we do not have, we wait for it patiently. Praise be to God for his holy word. This is quite an interesting passage that we read together today from Romans 8. Paul compares the revelation of God's children to that of creation. Creation that is still subject to frustration. A creation that is still in the bondage of decay. Whilst Paul says that we, as children of God, are brought into freedom and glory, and that we have been adopted to be God's children. I remember vividly, and I have shared it with you many times, the story of a playwright who was born an orphan. And he was adopted as a baby and grew up with his biological parents. He never had the need to look for his biological parents, and that might just have been him. Because he felt that his adoptive parents have shown him so much love and so much care that there were no need for him to look for anything more in life. When he got married, his widowed spouse-to-be had a young son of nine. And I remember reading in this article how this playwright went to this nine-year-old son and said, you know what? I love you despite everything. I am not your father, but I am willing to be your father. I'm coming to you and I'm telling you that I will love you regardless of what the future might hold. And that I will treat you as my own blood from now on end. Because, because of my own history, of being an adopted son. I know that my parents chose to love me. They chose to show me compassion. They chose to be my parents. And so I have chosen you to be mine. And you will be mine regardless of everything that happens. Whenever I hear the story, I must say that I feel a bit teary then. Because Having been, uh, having the privilege to have stand in the maternity ward twice with the birth of our own children, who I love dearly, they were given to us with all their wonderful joys and mistakes that they have within them. But I don't have a choice for loving my own children. I must love them because they're mine. But when God tells us that He chose to love us, it is something huge that happens to us. God doesn't love us because He must love us. God chose to love us because He really wants to love us. He who created humankind in His image makes a choice for us each and every moment in Christ Jesus. Because through Jesus, not matter what we do, no matter what we have done in the past, God chooses to love us. And we are now God's children. Even if we consider our present suffering, Paul writes in Romans 8, we still have this revealed glory within us that we are God's children. More so, Paul writes uh, in, in verse, um, in verse uh, 14, that for those who are led by the Spirit are children of God. So we are reminded about that, but that we are also adopted into God's kingdom. And therefore, we can speak to God each and every moment of the day by calling Him Abba, Father, and now, Paul says, not only are we adopted children of God, not only are we now His own, but the Spirit reminds us each and every day that we are God's children. 
when we pray, when we journey with God through our reading of the Bible, when we listen to the people around us, when we, when we come into the presence of God each and every moment, we know, we know that we are children of God. We know that we are His heirs. We are princes and princesses within the kingdom of God. And God has made us His own, not only for now, but also for the time that comes, even in those sufferings that we have to sometimes endure, we are still reminded that we are children of God. And it's important that we are reminded of this, because when we forget, we tend to forget who we are, and we forget that we are also part of the identity of being God's children. I remember a few years ago, sitting um, at a judicial committee meeting and somebody shared the story of a minister who, who sadly had an affair. And when the committee who interviewed the minister asked him, but when did the affair start? The minister shared with Presbytery that it started the morning when he woke up and looked at his wife and decided that he was not going to love her anymore. And I must say that it really rocked the way that I think about love and about our relationships and about the way that we explore relationships not only between us as, as, as God's children but also in our relationship with God because the moment when I stop to listen to God then I lose hope the moment when I stop to listen to be reminded that I am God's child then I tend to forget who I am and then I lose my identity and therefore, Paul writes in verse 24, For in this hope, the hope that we have that we are God's children. And this is not a hope like hoping to win the lottery. This is a sure thing because we are in God. But then Paul says, we don't hope for things that we can see. We hope for things that will happen. And therefore, we hope that in our journey with God, that His power will be revealed in us every day but more so that we will one day be part of His heavenly kingdom that He has promised to us through Christ. The fact that I am God's child gives me not only hope for this world, it also places me in a hope for the future, a hope that I am waiting patiently for to rejoin Christ in His kingdom in heaven. But do not fear. Do not be anxious, because God's kingdom is also here. Every inch of this creation belongs to God and to His creation. And because we are God's children, we have this wonderful, sure hope that even in the worst of circumstances, even when we see the frustration of creation, even when we see our own frustration, our own anxiety and fears, then we will always know, we will always hear the whisper. You are a child of God. And if we doubt it, if we struggle with this concept, look in the mirror today, look at the wrinkles, look at the hair becoming a bit thinner on the top, so my wife tells me each and every day. And remember that that face that reflects in the mirror was created in the image of God, and that that face is God's son and daughter and we belong to God the one who said I will be with you till the end of days Jesus' words at the end of Matthew 28 Praise be to God as we journey with him as his sons and daughters in Christ Amen once again, we come together into the presence of God through prayer and we come and we intercede for our world and ourselves. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence this morning and we thank you for your hope. We thank you that you are always on our side, keeping us safe, keeping us in your, in your fold and making us children of you. We are your children. We are your princes and princesses and we are part of your kingdom 
and we know that you will be looking after us and caring for us and loving us and sharing your comfort as we go back into the world once more. And whenever we falter, whenever we are in doubt of who we are, help us through your spirit that we may be reminded that we are indeed your children and will always be. With that, Lord, we continue to pray for our country. We pray for the Queen and those in authority. We pray for those who are exercising their duty in Westminster, Holyrood, as well as, as in our local Murray Council. We pray, Lord, that you will guide them and keep them in your peace. We pray for those who shape our society. We pray for those who care, those who serve, those who teach, those who assist, those who, who mend, and those who keep us safe. We pray, Lord, that as we pray for our community and our town, that you will be our guiding light, that as we return back to a new normal, whatever that might be, that we will know that you will also be with us and keep us in your hope and in your peace. Lord, we give thanks for your love. We also know that we can come to you as we pray for those who are in trouble, those who are sick, that they may be cared for, those who are lonely, sustained, those who are oppressed, strengthened, those who mourn, comforted, and those who are close to death, that they may know their risen Lord. But Lord, also bless us in your company each and every day, that as we journey back into the world, back into the unknown sometimes, that we will know that you will be with us, that you will intercede for us through your Spirit, and that we will always be known by our new identity in Christ, children of God. We pray this in the name of your Son and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We draw our service to a close as we sing together hymn 561, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine.
and now we go back into the world and we know that we will have God's blessing with us each and every moment of the day. And therefore, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And therefore, receive the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, that we may know His love, His comfort, and our new identity in Christ, children of God. May the blessing of God be with us now and evermore. Amen. We close our service with our retiring hymn, hymn 786, May the God of Peace go with us. And do join us again uh, next week as we come back to St. Giles, but also a reminder that we will continue with our online services, so you are more than welcome to join us once again next Sunday at 10.30.